Hi there, it's Denver from the DMB Archive. Welcome back to the channel. We've got a Fred again inspired tutorial today, um, breaking down a track similar to his new one that he's got unreleased with Baby Keem, which has been killing it all over the internet recently. The track is very simple, so this will be a kind of short video today. Um, kind of includes four main elements, which is the plucky atmospheric, the melodics, the vocals, the short stabby drums, and the flowing bass line. This differs to a lot of Fred Against tracks as he kind of tends to stem from house and garage. Um, but this is an exciting one today, so I can't wait to break this one down for you. I uh, hope you enjoy. Immerse yourself in the versatility of Wraith with 60 expertly designed presets your music will pulse with energy and creativity. And guess what, it's only yours for £15. Whether you're into liquid, neurofunk or jungle, Wraith has you covered. From captivating pads to earth shaking basses, we've curated sounds that will make your tracks truly exceptional. All of the presets used today uh, will also be included in that pack. So yeah, go check it out. Cheers and enjoy the video guys. First we've got the drums. Um, which I've kept very simple, because Fred again likes to keep them very simple. Um, I just have like a sharp, like stabby kick, um, a bit of like a trappy snare it sounds like, so uh, I'll play what I've got. Um, so yeah, just classic like drum and bass pattern, and I've got these top loops from the archive too. Um, some side chain prepped, ready for when I've got the bass. Uh, I'll show you quickly what I've got on uh, the drum bus because I've compressed pretty heavily. This is Pro C2. If you don't have it, I would definitely acquire it. Um, uh, yeah, this sidechain option is really good because basically, I'll explain what it's kind of doing right now for those that don't understand uh, compression, like myself, because uh, it's confusing. I can't lie. Uh, I have the threshold which is basically at which point the compression starts to activate. And as you can see, this is reaching like minus uh, eight dB. So everything over minus eight is being compressed. Uh, then we move on to the ratio, which is how much it's being compressed by. Uh, and we currently have a basically two to one ratio, um, which isn't massive, but for a bus compression, uh, that's plenty. I tend to keep it under two. Same with the master, I try to keep it under two. So we're not compressing it too much, but we're kind of like gluing it together a bit. I've got the style on here of bus because I think it emulates the SSL bus compressor. Um, I think it does anyway, <laughs> I'm not too sure. Uh, but it always sounds really good. Um, I have the attack pretty slow, which means basically it's how fast the compression activates once a snare or a kick triggers the compression. So I hit and then it tells you here it's got 75 milliseconds um, till the compression activates. So that kick will hit, first initial transients will stab through, then the compression will bring it straight back down again. Basically we're making it like all the transients of the drums like sharper and stab through. Uh, and the release is kind of one of those things that you can mess around with but the faster it is the kind of more hats you hear in it and the jumping around uh, the slower it is the more pumping effect there is and the little elements in the back like the uh, hats and stuff are more smoothed out I'll play it, I'll play it and kind of show you what I mean so if I can press the hell out of it you can hear those transients Still stabbing through if I put it here with the uh, fast release you can hear now all these hats are almost as loud as everything else if I've got it here they're still just tucked into those drums the kick and snare are still overpowering so it's obviously tasteful um, there we go I'm gonna put the threshold back up it's a good way to listen to it if it's really compressed kind of hear what you want it to be doing that sits really nicely in my opinion um, I want to smooth it out a bit with a release uh, attack 
a bit better around the area. Um, but yeah, that's uh, basic drum compression. Uh, you can use parallel. Oh, I haven't in this case. I've only got one. I then have a saturation knob uh, on the end here. Only saturating it to 0.6. But as you can hear with all Fred's mixes, um, they're very bright and clean. Which also is really important when you're playing out live. You want everything to shine through and have that kind of effect. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but as professional as possible, um, keeping everything bright and clean and energy, uh, energetic, like with this saturation we're doing here. Really kind of brings it out. Don't want too much, obviously. Yeah. That sits perfect. But that's what we have so far for the drums. Very simple. Um, yeah, into the next step. Uh, I then have this vocal that I've just added uh, and chopped up. I'll show you what it sounds like. And then I've chopped this up. So it sounds like this now. Uh, and that plays when the drop comes with the drums. Uh, with the drums, it will sound like this. Might sound slightly random right now, but uh, trust the process. Uh, we've got the bass coming through next. So, I have now got a bit of a drop um and build up going so uh i'll play this out quickly to you Uh, yeah, cool. So I'll first get into. Um, I'll start with the melodics. Um, so we have this little ARP thing that plays uh, here. This little thing, which is from my new preset pack, um, it's just a pad, which I've literally just pulled this down. So it's a bit of a sharper kind of bell plucky thing that Fred uses in that track. Um, effects wise all I have on it is a pro R that's literally it um, and all it is is a song wave for the unison about 14 um, and this digital wavetable that I've clearly never used before <laughs> um, the detune and the unison at 11 it's a bit detuned that's a bit detuned as well this is just modulating the cutoff uh, and asymmetric plus um, I'm not even sure if that stands for asymmetric <laughs> That's embarrassing. Um, and uh, some white noise as well, as you can hear. Uh, and that's just played a high octave. Gives it some bounce as well. Uh, and one more pad, which is also from my new preset pack. Uh, just like that, which has a trim on it. And a stereo shaper and some EQ, just shaping it a bit. And an OTT, which is crushing it to be honest i'll break down now the bass which may seem complicated but it's really not uh, i have these three automation clips here that i'll go over um this is another bass from the pack uh, called blister it's just i'll take all effects off it first oh it'd be nice if it played Kind of a simple respace. Uh, this is what it looks like. Just one sine wave, FM from B. Uh, a basic mini. Minus two octaves. Uh, band plus has been modulated, and so is the wavetable. I have a comb filter on it as well. Effects wise, some distortion, some flanger, uh, basic compression, and a little peak EQ there. 
<clears throat> with some white noise. Uh, and this porter, which is up and always, so it slides um, with the notes. Uh, I have, yeah, this is the this is the pattern. Uh, it's layered by a sub bass as well, if you can see all that stuff down there. Um, yeah, this is the um, basic pattern. So I've separated this high slide down to another one, which is just this port turned off, so it doesn't slide, it just plays out with zero attack or anything. Um, but the main bass pattern. Um, effects wise, which is a lot of the sound itself. So I have one OTT at about 30% uh, pro Q, taking all the lows out because it's paired with a sub. Uh, decapitator, which is automated, I'll get into that sec. Chorus, which is automated. An EQ, which is automated, and a reverb. That's this the end. Uh, people might question that reverb, but it sounds cool, in my opinion. Um, but automating first is this EQ, right? You can hear and uh, see this automation clip here. And it's obviously a really distorted sub bass, so when those frequencies open up, it's quite impactful. To activate that, all you have to do is drag this little knob here, go up to this knob, press right click on that, and then uh, create automation clip, and then I've just drawn this in. Second one we have here is this decapitator that I'm just automating the mix of. This is just distorting it even more. I've turned this tone up bright so there's a bit more crispiness in it, which I like. Uh, last automation is this chorus, which doesn't do too much, but it just sits there. Gives it a bit of tone. Um, and then obviously like you can hear I have this sidechain which I always use which is just this it's a volume automation it plays as the kick and the snare uh, plays um, yeah that's basically it for the drop what I've done is I've changed up this uh, vocal chop as well so it kind of um, replays that port like it does in um in the threads tune um, but yeah for effects on the vocal I've actually also added this uh, pan man which goes from left to right really slowly as you can hear it moving around it's a really cool plugin oh I definitely recommend using that uh, it just adds a lot to the track um, yeah but that's pretty much it that's pretty much the basics I'm gonna add some final touches to the intro and the drop um, do a subtle little master and I'll be back in a sec. I'm going to play this out for you now. Um, obviously, we didn't have Baby Keem in a studio next to me, so it's not exactly turned out the same exactly. Um, but we've worked with what we've got. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something. This is an awesome track. I genuinely can't wait till it comes out. Um, but yeah, enjoy. Enjoy.